Hello! Today I'm going to guide you through Insadong. Insadong was originally founded over 500 years ago to be a residential neighborhood for government officials. Of course, though now it's nothing like that at all. It's a hotspot for tourism, souvenir shopping, snacks, and all sorts of things like that. Now, Insadong includes this entire area around here, but most people are going to be focused on one single road, which you'll notice when you arrive, it has the most people walking down it. So here are my tips for how you can get the most out of Insadong. Starting with If this is your first time visiting Korea, don't let here be where you experience Korean food for the first time. In fact, this doesn't only apply here, but also to Myeongdong, which is nearby. And except for a couple examples, there really isn't anything that you can get here that you can't find a million other places and probably at a lower price. One exception though I would say is kurtare. If you're into that, it's kind of like a thin honey and nut snack that's pretty good and I tend to see most of the shops around here. Now I'm not saying don't eat here, there are some decent restaurants, but save your appetite for other places you're going to anyway. They do sell some street food here, but the selection is pretty bad. In fact, I only saw one cart, one, selling tteokbokki items. So yeah, if you are here and you do want to eat something, let me recommend something. Turn to your right or your left down many of the small alleyways that you'll see along your way, and you're going to find a lot of better and more interesting options. Now, I didn't manage to get this on film, unfortunately, but you might sometimes encounter people walking around that approach you. I saw a monk earlier trying to approach someone and offer them something for free, but then once you take it, they demand money. They're not real monks in the first place, so look out for that. But there isn't too much of that going on here. There's actually something else more important that I want you to pay attention to, and that is don't do your general shopping here. That includes buying things like clothes or cosmetics. And the reason is because here the selection will be smaller and the prices will be a little bit more. However, what you can and probably should buy here are traditional souvenirs. This includes masks, pottery, chopsticks, any kind of traditional souvenir that you can think of is sold here. And while you can, of course, find many of these same types of traditional souvenirs everywhere in Korea, in fact, any major market should have general things like this. The benefit of getting them in Insadong is that they're all in one place and you have a much bigger selection than you would get anywhere else. Due to its location and the fact that it's always filled with tourists, the prices are still a little bit higher than you might pay at other places, but I still would recommend this place over any other place if you're shopping for traditional souvenirs. For example, if you wanna buy gifts for family and friends back home. There are many artisans that are making items right here and selling them. And while at other places you can buy items that you could also just find online usually, the benefit of here is that a lot of stores will also sell handmade items. So you're getting something that's more custom and more unique. Speaking of custom things, another thing that you might wanna check out here is getting a custom made stamp. Now I've actually never done this in over 18 years but I've always wanted to have one. They're just, they're just a bit expensive. And although there are a lot of things you can buy here in other locations in Korea as well, there are some things you can really only get here, at least in a decent variety. For example, Korean traditional paper, hanji, the texture of it is really cool and it's popular for doing calligraphy with. Another thing that you can have done here is getting your name or something you want written in traditional style calligraphy. And not all of the shops will do it, but if you ask them, they should be able to tell you where you can get it done. Another thing that you might want to check out as well is traditional artwork. Now there are many painters, artists here who will make things themselves and sell them. With that said, the prices are often quite high. So this wouldn't be a $5 souvenir. Think somewhere in the hundreds, depending on the size or the style of what sort of artwork you wanna get. But if you're looking for something that's more unique to Korea and handmade, then this is one place that you can get that. 
of course, if you have deep pockets. And in fact, if you have deep pockets, you might want to consider please supporting me on my YouTube channel or my Patreon. You can find links to those in the description below. One more thing that I recommend you definitely should do while you're here is visit a traditional tea shop, a tatti. And these are essentially cafes where you can make tea. They'll bring you the tea kettle and a menu and you can select which kind you'd like. This is the menu. And they give you the hot water and you make it yourself. And you can just sit back and relax and talk with someone and drink tea. Or do what I did and just drink it by yourself for like an hour while looking over at the other people walking by. In this area, in fact, there are many tea houses that you'll find. So just pick any of them. And if you're curious though, you can usually find reviews online before you go. But the one that I went to, you can see here, was actually really nice and I would recommend that one too. In addition to just drinking tea, you can also purchase tea at many of these tea houses and you'll even find separate stores that simply just sell tea. And many of the stores where you can buy tea like this will also let you sample it before you purchase it so you can know what you're getting. As for tea, there's also a tea museum called the Arumdaung Cha Pangulguan which is more like a regular tea house with a small museum on the side and a nice place to stop by to get a cup of tea. Another thing that you can do here, which I did happen to see a couple people doing it, is renting and wearing hanbok. You can do that in many other places in Korea as well, specifically near any of the palaces, but it's not common to see it outside of the palace areas too much. So if you do it here, you're probably going to get a lot of interested stares. I think it would be a really unique experience. I spent nearly the entire day hanging out around here, going into stores, talking with the merchants. I even bought a really cool coin. I was talking with the worker there and he figured out where the coin came from and what year it was made around. And another thing that you might want to also check out is some of the traditional Korean snacks because you're not going to find them in as nice of a variety as you can here in other places. Oh, it's chewy, it's good. So this has been my short guide to Insadong. Have you ever been here? What did you like? What did you dislike? Any other tips? Check the comments down below and I do check those as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in another episode. 그럼 다음에 또 봐.